Hi everyone, Sothany Zantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this uh, new Drake for All the Dogs Scary Hours edition. Drake, 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 Drake. Aubrey, he's back. Even though he just dropped a brand new LP just over a month ago for all the dogs. He did numbers, he dropped bangers, he generated some cringe, some memes, a few number ones, made Joe Budden mad, and got a 5 out of 10. All things considered, successful album cycle for Drake. And even Drake himself seemed very satisfied with the results to the point where he came out and announced he was going to do a little hiatus, a little breaky poo. Probably because he wanted to let Adonis take the game over when he dropped his uh, My Man Freestyle official track and in music video. And I think, and Drake is not going to admit this. He's not going to admit this. I think the track did did too good in terms of numbers and you know maybe he saw his life flash before his eyes started to regret taking a break i mean he spent over a decade building this empire he's not just going to hand it over like that so being the sixth god he had to come back and drop six tracks on top of the 23 that were already there with for all the dogs now i presumed Everything on this would just be like extras, cutting room floor stuff, and maybe to an extent some of it is. But there's at least a few bars that indicate Drake recorded some of this stuff after the album. Either way, it's more music and at least some of it is kind of mid. This whole disc to assembly of tracks opens up with Red Button, which has the tone and tenor of an endless rant Drake type track with a very pretty beat that features these looping choral sections. We have a steady flow from Drake with a lot of bars about him just essentially going scorched earth. But of course, some of the language he uses to describe this feeling is unintentionally hilarious. As if this Taylor Swift bar was not weird enough. But we also get, uh, I will start blacking over here like it's segregation. I will fucking leave you in the dirt like some vegetation. It's seething, but not biting. And of course there's a Kanye bar on the track, but when is Drake not reminding us of the time Kanye Kanye betrayed him on a new record. He's always doing it every time, despite the fact that he has nothing new to say about it, and it just makes me feel like we're stuck in a fucking time loop. Stories About My Brother has a similarly laid back Drake in his mind inner monologue vibe, but overall, it's a much better track. We have a Conductor Williams beat on this one, some very moody jazz horn harmonies, and Drake is spitting about his detractors, the people who count him out people who have been close to him too. And you know what? He's making some valid points. Still, we do get lines like this, which uh, <sighs> do, do warrant an eye roll. The Shoe Fits is another very laid back, judgmental cut too. Kind of funny because in terms of energy, to me, this song feels like the most old Drake, but simultaneously he's saying on this track that he can't go back to being the old Drake, he doesn't know how anymore. But generally this track is all about women who he's been with or women who are hung up on him. And like many of Drake's tracks from the past, it comes from a place of bitterness, clearly. But at least we actually get some consistently funny and witty shots across the song. Maybe you could stop getting involved in some shit when you're not involved, or maybe go for a walk somewhere that's not a mall. Also, what's your baby shoe size? could tell by the laces they tight, or are you only focused on the steps that I'm taking in life? That's, that's sick. That is sick. It's so casual, but also so petty and so venomous. Now, Drake tries to empty some clips again on the following track, Wick Man, which actually has a The Alchemist production credit on it, but I don't think Uncle Al sent his best on this one. We have all of these drip drop synth effects flying left and right in the mix, very dull drums, uh, some uh, washed out walls of synth chords. It doesn't really fit the aggressive tone of the bars, which again, empty clips. He's going ballistic, he's rapping about Pusha again. We're just stuck in a time loop. Can't move past this. And look, even if Drake has a point about Pusha on this song and uh, he was actually broke and down to his last dollar, it doesn't change the fact that like he scarred him in a way that no other rapper ever will. And he's going to live in his head rent free forever as a result of that. What also kind of takes the wind out of this track sales is we do get more grown worthy bars like a John Cena wouldn't know emotions I wrestle with. Stop. 
stop. Is he writing this or is he approving this after someone ghostwrites it? Either way, apparently we need more filters between the writing process and the recording process to stop bars like these from getting out there into the world. There's other moments on this track where he says outlandish shit in a totally serious, self-serious way, like a white America Sam becoming a threat. To who? Like, Drake is notorious for having not even a lick, a whiff, an atom of social or political or racial commentary in everything he does. So how he's a threat to white America, I do not know. In fact, white America loves Drake. Loves Drake. We have another song with J. Cole on here, which I guess is understandable considering how big first person shooter was, uh, with that being just a, a great cut, fiery cut, number one cut. Uh, but all, all I can really say about this one is that um, it, it, it's no first person shooter, even if there are some standout bars to be had. And then the closer, You Broke My Heart, really had the potential to be the most explosive and incredible song on this entire little extra drop from the huge horn hits on the instrument to the super confident Drake flows and that, uh, you know, amazing uh, little sample of that <laughs> woman in the track. I was like, please don't go! And Drake's just rapping from a dramatic and old school Drake kind of place. But then it doesn't take long for him to squander it with this refrain toward the end of the track where he's just like, fuck my ex, fuck my ex, fuck my ex. With the way he's singing it, and also just like, you know, with the added vocal effects on the vocals, you know, the way they're kind of touched up, uh, combined with the fact that they are competing with the horns a little bit, it sounds like he's saying, fuck my ass. It's like one of those things that once you hear it, you can't like unhear it, which again, another example of when Drake gets angry and lashes out, it often ends in such a way where he's just sort of like stepping on a rake and then it just smacks him in the face. But yeah, that that's really all I think about these extras. I could give it a strong five. Is that fine? Position, have you given this Scary Hours extras thing a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Drake, Scary Hours, uh, forever.